Ya kaya ya yuxatini takat yuhan. Ya huchi khana aya linkage takatultu wuch in. Sekanan aktuwasagu. Isakwa ahi aya knach awe. Vishukwa ayi hin aya khu u. Hasawe just kodnesh to has altu linkit yukatangi. Kwash kashdasa has awasku a dark kushtach ayegu geng. Just sing it in a hot, test late hark in a just sing it. A it ah, ya after was a go he nick coo. He nick coo, sing it, conne, a ya, ya has a yanus queen. Ah, ye aware. Gosh has our ach sing it, jay, ganky. Aware has a higher ach. Hast so, what has the two as a goo you crew a tani? Ye quati a quawe cocatina has yeti. A it ha hin tak coo. Sing it cone a ya ya yas a yan and yas and a shakook. Yas and a shkook ye awa. Ya and a shkooku awa ya dasa has awa ach. Hasakaya <laughs> We eat kakuu. Ya stakatu han yan tusa queen. Wooch in. Ahu akoa. Ta hashakun kanakoi has to eat yan to it. Yeo had to was a good stakatuu akeuti. A cautious zidane aya wooch in your regatus art. Yeah, what to what he? Ya second and co a wait a yak. A shuko a yi a itra a itra a itra. Just think it enough. Yeah, away, yan shuk quatan. Ya ha wooch in the tea gao. Kashuchi a yako a. Kashkeka shuk quatan. Yende shuk quatan. Kesh a ya. Cook up my steve at a way to play, which in you a gartutla art. Cash to gartut too. You care how you han. Gunn's cheese claim ye age knee. You clad her in a he de caconicosa at coconetsu. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. So, this is our last, uh, sort of class session, and then tomorrow we'll give way to, uh, closing, uh, speeches. Speaking in front of people. Uh, and you know, this is how we've, as how I was taught. This is okay, everyone's gonna make speeches and you're expected to, you know, say what you can, do what you can. All in Shingit, not in English. Um, so as, as much as I like to hear from everybody, I'm hoping uh, tomorrow I won't be hearing, well, what I was hoping to do, you know, like this little thing in Tlingit and then this long explanation in English about, well, my dog was just doing this and the, the male person came and then it was raining again, you know, just whatever, like, just, just show us what you got and, and there's no, it don't, it don't matter. It's all good. All good. Nobody's getting judged. Nobody's getting shamed. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. It's a celebration. Dark kwa art aya hashuka kwa hashuka Our ancestors are gonna come out and just listen to us and see this amazing thing. Like if, if I think of people uh, who didn't get to see uh, days when there's you know forty people trying to learn thing at the same time, there were some who just see like four or five. I'm sure that they'd be overjoyed to see what you can do, even if it's just a little bit, because you, wherever you're at, that's where you are. We're all at different spots on this, these paths to the mountaintop. 
And so uh, we'll start with Hin uh, Chayachu. Those who uh, they just got their toes in the water, maybe just the toe poking in, and that, that means uh, you really are just getting started on your language journey. Uh, you you might not know very much, and, and that's okay. We just want to hear hear you say something. Just say something and sing it. Um, if if you have to write it all out and then read it, that's totally fine. But probably not just reading somebody else's words necessarily. Um, but you know, certainly, I, I guess almost like a if you got a student in like an early college writing class, like turn a three-page paper and it's like a one paragraph and then a two-page quote and then one paragraph. You're like, mm. you know, but it's okay, it's okay. And then uh, after that, we'll have the hinikhu. So those who are in, you're in the shallows, you're in the shallow waters. You've been doing this for a little while. You could, uh, you've memorized a bunch of stuff. You're starting to really get a glimpse of how the language works. You could probably substitute a bunch of things into some phrases, and you could use the resources to put together a speech that conveys your thoughts, even though there might be things in there that are, um, the grammar might need some adjustment at some point. Uh, then we're gonna have the hintak uh, ku'u. So these are folks who've been studying for a while, and uh, you can understand most everything you hear, and you can say quite a bit, uh, in, including just sort of going off the cuff and, and just saying some things when you can. Uh, and then, uh, and more than memorizing too, uh, you're, you're getting conversational, or you are conversational. Then we'll, we'll end with it uh, um, the ones who uh, can speak Klingit and uh, can do so for long stretches, using their imagination, speculating, jumping around in time, integrating stories, doing that kind of stuff. And uh, there's never a competition. We're never trying to outdo one another, but we are. Tlingit is, it shines in the moments of oratory. So that, that's kind of what we lead up towards with a lot of these things. Um, I do think we should record it because not everybody could be here tomorrow, maybe. Some people who, maybe we start with 40 and we're ending with 25, but maybe one of those 15, like, man, I wonder what happened. And then they can check back in later. Say, yeah, yeah, come on back. Uh, any questions? Yeah, we'll, we'll cover some uh, talking about a, a land acknowledgement in Tlingit that probably would look, work a little different than what sort of is being used typically on a day-to-day -day basis uh, by a lot of organizations to acknowledge indigenous peoples, which is great. But uh, I'll tell you what I do when I go to places. Um, maybe we'll just jump into that right now. So one of the things I do is I look at who are the people who are there. So uh, for example, uh, oh, there's no time requirements. Um, keep it under 45 minutes if you can. Uh, you know, and uh, we keep it above 45 seconds. Now, probably at 45 minutes, a little long. This, if, you know, there's uh, 23 of us now, I think there were 30-something of us yesterday, 36 maybe. So if we have 36 people with two and a half hours, uh, I'm sure we'll get to everybody. As long as there's no, if, but please don't start switching into English and giving us, because we can do that. We can. We know, we already know we can. And uh, I've gotten in trouble before for trying to keep people in Tlingit. Um, and I know the boarding school and the residential school experience is very real and very horrible. My father, his, his siblings went through horrible things. This is one generation up. And, uh, and I know lots of people who have. But one time I was trying to keep everybody in Tlingit, which included when people start speaking English, I'd say, Tlingit Kainach. And um, and somebody got mad at me because I was cutting people off. But that was what I was, that was my job. I was assigned that job. I didn't want that job, but they said, you're going to do that. I was like, all right. And, and this it's tough because maybe someone's having a hard time because they forgot a lot of Shingit or they feel like they want to contribute and everybody's doing all this stuff. And that, but we, sometimes we don't have time for the English. 
And so uh, somebody came up to me really angry. And they said, you're doing to us what they did to us with the residential schools. As a, by encouraging you to speak our own language. I don't think so, but I, 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 hear, I heard you. <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. So, uh, so we will have some of those other, um, we will have other times. You know, we, we do have, we had times throughout this workshop and this isn't the last one, not by far. We're just going to take a break from this thing and we'll kick it up again at some other point. Uh, we'll keep you folks in the loop through base camp and other means. Like if we have any sort of, just want to have a little gathering, you can always use, um, the zoom links that are provided. Uh, this one can be used for groups to study. Um, there's a study one, which is better for folks. If you just want to get together, chat, study, play games, talk, whatever, it's always open. Basecamp is always, and that that's another way to chat with each other. We have a, uh, what's that other thing? A discord. That's, there's also a thing at discord. So if you want to get into that stuff, you can, uh, some of you could pick up a phone. I'm not always good. I've been trying to, uh, return phone calls, but then some of us, we miss each other as well. Uh, I will put the categories in there in a moment. Um, so when you're going to talk somewhere, you got to find out, uh, let me, let me show you, uh, what I would usually use. Hold on one second. And I'll put this up so that you all have a, um, you all have a copy of it. So there was a group uh, called Clinkit Readers, and they developed this map. So if you're in Clinkit country and you want to talk land acknowledgement, that's a little bit different than outside. It will take care of the inside one first. So the first one, uh, and I would probably make a few adjustments to this, not nothing too major. Uh, I would say uh, for uh, the Wrangell area. Uh, but one of the things that you would do is you'd know which Kwan you're looking at. So for example, if you were coming to Juno, Ak Kwan. Um, and then that's, especially if you're like in the city of Juno, uh, if you were up at UAS, anywhere like that, that's Ak Kwan territory. So one is know who, who are the people. Kwan are the ancestral people of a place. So from there, uh, you would go down. And so we might look through here. So these correspond to these lists down here. Um, and we go down. Here's Ak Kwan. So I might zoom in and this shows you a couple things. The clans and the houses. But you got to learn a few things about the areas. It's good to just know some of this history, find some people you could talk to. Um, my auntie, when she was preparing me, my auntie Kathy, when she was preparing me for teaching and doing stuff with her peoples, she would always point out who people are in the room. Like if you really want to do this stuff, when you walk into a room, you look at what clans are there and you see and you make a you make a list and if you got some people who do this kind of stuff you visit with them say hey what what, what clans you see here and you make the list of the clans uh for this one is i would also adjust this a little bit if i was an ak kwan i would probably talk about the yachtetan and the Tlinedi. and those might be the two that i address and then the Wushkitan. As far as which one you address first, this is how it works. Whatever clan you are, you're either usually on the raven side or crow, or the eagle side or wolf, and you start with the opposites. The first one you say is whoever's land you're on. I live on Wushkitan land. That's who I would like if I was at something, uh, say right down the road at the Juno Clinton Haida Community Center. That's the first group I would say. 
Nilchish Ya Akhani Yan Wushkitan Yi An Ka Aya Yekha U Stilka Khata Ti Awe Ye Jahani Yi An Ka Yi Sisk Ohas Ani Aya Gunil Chish So you refer to them by however you're connected. I I do not have genealogical connections to the Wushkitan. I'm very close with lots of Wushkitan peoples. So I would call them Achkaniyan. Achkaniyan, my in-laws. Now I would name them Wushkitan. I'm thankful to live on your land. Uh, and you can just say stuff like that, like, I, I live on your land, I work on your land, I'm thankful, I'm grateful that you are kind with me. And then, once you've taken care of your, your opposites, you always do all of them first. Then you switch over to the, the ravens, and you acknowledge them, and you acknowledge their presence, you acknowledge what they're doing there. The higher praises typically go to your opposites. That's just how it goes. Uh, but in the in the context of like really just acknowledging whose land you're on, then I would say, Yohansu yachte tan kachli neidi yanika yeha yati itzu kachish tlein. So then you could reach out and thank them as well. Uh, you, you always take care of your opposites first. You always, uh, you tend to, honestly, give them the higher compliments. Because you don't want to be seen as bragging about yourself. And if you're a raven, the other raven clans are yourself. So if I'm at a Kuik that's hosted by the Tliknach Adi, the Koho, as much as I love them, love them. I would not stand up at their ku'ik and say, oh, you guys did a great job. Great job. Same thing, if I'm shukach adi, I would not stand up at our thing and say, we did a good job tonight. I just, I would not say that. If you've done a good job, your opposite should stand up and say, you did a good job. So when we're talking about shingit and, and whose land, those, those are some key concepts. Touch on your in-laws first. Identify whose land it is. Also, if you can, figure out where some of the contention lies so you can try and avoid it. Um, it gets a little tricky because some clans will, you know, get into, sometimes they get into disagreements about who was there first, whose land is actually where. Same with at the Quran level, those things absolutely happen. Some terminology. Talking to all the people. That's all the people. The noble people. Maybe not all of them. You know, there might be some people who are not very noble out there. But that works really well for addressing people. Uh, there's another term. That is not everybody who's there. If I'm here, the Anyatkusani are the high class people of the Wushkitan, the Trinedi, and the Yachtetan. That's that should be known to all of us. As if we go places, we speak Tlingit, when we talk about Anyatkusani, we're saying like the leaders of an area. That means the clans who are there, okay? So those are some things. From there, once you've acknowledged whose land you're on, you start talking about the clans that are there. Start and really praising your opposites. You start with your father's people. Ka guantan, achish has, wasach tu satini. So you, you talk to your father's people, name them. Then you could say you could say the kinship part either before or after. My father's. 
Uh, then there's ways to, you, you usually show how you're connected, your grandparents' clan, your Dakanuku, and then you start going out to the other eagle clans that you see. Try to see them. Try not to miss them, especially if you, if you know somebody, like someone's your teacher or something, someone's your elder, and if you miss them, hey, you don't want to do that. There are some catch-all things to help you, though. You can say, the cut or say Kleik Shengu Kedi is all the eagle clans. Kleik Shengu Kedi. Kleik Kleinedi is all the raven clans. Kleik Kleinedi. Or you could say Kash the cut Yuhan. Chak Nach Siti Ah. The cut Yuhan. Ye Nach Siti Ah. And I'll tell you this. You do the catch-all for your opposites. You, you, you don't, I don't think you necessarily have to do that with the ravens. But, you know, it, you could. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, and then if, if you are not Klingit, or even like if you're Klingit, like if for whatever reason I went to... Um, uh, I was in Sitka, like, and they said, "Hey, could you could you uh, welcome the people?" So and so was going to do it, but they they got sick. Um, could you go do that? So, uh, yes, you could, and and a non clingit person could, ideally, like uh, someone who is, uh, you know, and and this is often like if this was a clingit thing, this might be done by multiple people, like a, a representative from each clan or something. But you could stood up you could stand up and you could say Kalchish Hati Adi Hastu Shishko Has Anika Wushkitan. Right I went back to Wushkitan. Well let's say we're in um we're out in like uh Kiksati land or something. Kulchish Hati Adi thank you all for coming. Hastu Shishko Has Anika on the land of their ancestors, kicks a D. And so um, there's some different things that you could do. You could certainly point out and say, Kesh kicks a de hat uste. Has had a woos koa. Has to ji yesaya yukhatan, clingit rinach. I'm not kicks a D, but they asked me to speak for them. And so th these are situations too, like. Make sure that they really ask you. Don't like, but if if you're like a, a dignitary of some sort, you represent some organization, and you're just starting the meeting off, there, there are certainly things you could do. So you could, if you wanted to speak Klingit, yek e hati ati, has tu chishko has ani ka ye hayati. We are on the ancestral land of them, and then you name them. Uh, we are on their ancestral land. And then you can you add the clan. Uh, if you don't know the clans, uh, you should learn them. Especially if you live there, work there, end up doing some public uh, welcoming type of things. It's just stuff you should know. And it's listed in this map. It's listed in the beginning Klingit workbook. It's a complicated thing with lots of history, whose land belongs where, and you know, you could get into some situations. Uh, some some folks here in in the Juno area have asked us to stop acknowledging the Taku Kwan because it's not their land. It's a little bit difficult for me to uh, to think about, but if you wanted to honor that, because if someone said, hey, you know. When you go up there, this is our land. You make sure you talk about us, not about those guys. So sometimes you have to politically sort of maneuver through those things. So you might stand up. Aka Awe, 
ye anech sati yak kayak ka awe do yakita kaku taku kwan wasa ha tu yakayak sati ni yak has the clear ko has an kaya ak kwan so uh just to try and not close the door on people if you have if you're in these situations uh you could say thank you all for coming we're on the land of, uh, in this case, the Yachtetan. And no Yachtetan person has said this kind of stuff. Like, don't acknowledge them, right? I'm just giving examples. Uh, but you could say, we're on the land of the Yachtetan. Kliya, further down. There is their ancestral land. Especially if there's strong connections. You go up to, uh, if you're in Haines, you got Jishkat up there over there so then it's good to do both but then it's good to know um, some of these things uh, yeah should be on there if it isn't is that on um, hmm. okay uh, let's see and yeah if if you the one thing also is make sure you work with someone who's knowledgeable and from that community. You go to somewhere like, uh, you go to Angoon and you're standing up to to just say thank you or something. Just like, look at this, make sure you've got your list, probably before you even get there, because you might think, um, well, they might ask me to talk, or I might, you know, if, if you are in a position where you end up representing an organization, whether that's a, something like Klingon Haida or, you know, an, an indigenous organization or not. SIAC or what, like this should just be common practice for a lot of organizations. So then you don't want to miss some people that are there. Like if you went to Hutsnu and he said, Wushkitan. And then you jumped right over to the other one and you just forgot oh, just something happened you forgot the dump um and you want to make sure that you're not trying to fix a whole bunch of stuff a little bit later um you can you can ask for forgiveness you can stand up and and you can fix a lot of things say so, oh, i just for, i forgot all about it you know but trying to avoid those things and 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 think it there was an awful lot of prep work that went on before anything even started i think people knew already a lot of what they were going to do um yeah so that's good good questions once you get outside of this area like say we went down to haida Gwai, you could use terms like anyat kosani but you are talking to like if you're in Masset, you're talking to the leaders of the clans of Masset, the high class people. You're not talking about just anybody who's there. But then Shawa Denehi could be uh, other folks. Um, but let, let's say you flew all over to, uh, you know, you got invited down to Lakota territory. You could stand up. Second Chish Lakota Y Anika Yehati Achtu Yik Echonacho Echasatin Y Anikatan Konachawi. You just give them compliments about their land, food they gave you, things that you might have seen there, um, and then just recognizing like who they are. If, if you learn like how how they operate and stuff like you can use a lot of this stuff now i saw a lot of great stuff in the chat as well Sheesh. okay i'll put that uh i'll put that map up uh that's good we need to also keep editing things so like most of the things i make are just living documents so there's been all kinds of additions, corrections, uh, shifts made uh, to uh, to to try and make sure that we're catching 
as much stuff as possible. Clan histories are long, complex, wonderful. Uh, probably not talked about enough, just generally. But um, yeah, other thoughts. I'll go through and uh, let's see. What do we have? Heen, Ayah, Pu, and Yake Kosaku hit. Um, uh, well, Dake talk. Um, Kwe Kosaku hit. Um, a very recent development for me is hearing the names of the houses. Okay. Yeah, and lots lots of houses, lots of clans, lots of, um, and some of these, like uh, some of the, a lot of the people who were doing a lot of their scholarship were maybe from different places. Like maybe a whole bunch of them were from Huna or a whole bunch of them were from Yakutat. And, and, and so maybe there's some blank spots out there in the Prince of Wales and Dakjakon um, and, and different stuff like that. So yeah, keeping it collaborative, making sure that we're, you know, if, if people send me stuff and it seems to you know, pretty much check out, then I, I try to adjust what I've been working on so that um, we have a list of the clans and the houses and where they are. And, and it's complicated when you get into like which clans, who's the original, and then so those are big conversations. And uh, If you're not from there, then listen and teach. But if there things are being engaged, like who who belongs where, and if you're not the Anyatki, just be careful. Okay, yake. So that would look at um, any other questions, any other things folks been thinking about. Hey, I'm just gonna throw up a couple of sentences in chat. Okay. Um, people to look at, hey, if, uh, oh, here we are, yeah. Um, so, I just, I just thought it was really neat language. Um, uh, uh, the rifle speaks when it's fired. This is uh, her father. Uh, was oh, cut it, cut out. I think the mute button got hit, maybe. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. I must have hit the wrong button there. Uh, this is her father teaching her how to hunt when she was five. So I'm guessing. 1936, eh? But, uh, uh, and the other one, uh, there's so much great line. I was working with KSH again today, but, uh, uh, um, our food is what your rifle exists for, uh, he, he told me. It's just, uh, yeah, just amazing language or, you know, a uh, great way to think about things, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sheesh. I have uh, three little, little points. One, Plinket readers still exist and we do meet, but uh, we're kind of floundering looking for a project. In fact, on our agenda is um, do we have anything we want to do? Second thing is, uh, I already forgot the third, but the second one is that I practice the CH pinch. <laughs> so I, that's how I am practicing that sound. Uh, uh, 
how they gone. My ears are burning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't add anything to it though. That's all I say. <laughs> okay. What was it? That's the chickadee tattoo. When it starts talking and you really hear it, it means somebody's thinking about you. Kakatu, a person's uh, feelings or person's thoughts. It was nice because I was, I was walking in the late fall, and I went over this little tree in this ravine, and I kind of fell down. Well, I crawled up this ravine. That's what it was. And I had to, it was really steep, and it was a really tough go, <laughs> and I was really tired. So I just sort of flopped down and laid in the snow for a while. And then all these chickadees started talking. So I was like, oh, good cheese. <laughs> I just listened to see what they were talking about. <laughs> okay, thank you folks for sharing. It's wonderful. And uh, yeah, so really take a dive into some of the languages of the old people, Shagun, Shuatin, uh, Chukatin, Anyashahash, uh, such amazing stuff from Teslin. And then where, where there's stuff from uh, so many speakers, so many. Um, I think we should, let me show you folks something. Um, so if you do an internet search, for uh, the Alaska Native Language Archive. Um, you'll find it, so Alaska Native Language Archive. So here it is. And so there's a, a, some different things you could do here. So one is you could type, you go to language and you could scroll down to uh, Clinkit and then you can just hit search and it'll pop up uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So the key is, let me zoom in here. So you're going to get this sort of code of like how it's cataloged. Uh, and then it's going to tell you what this is. Um, expressing general generalities in Clinkit, imperfective mode versus habitual. Uh, and this is actually, this is probably interviews with speakers. So you can probably get some stuff in here. If, if you're really interested in linguistics, you could probably get so his uh, linguistic interviews with Clinkett elders. And here's um, Carolyn Martin, John Martin, Selena Everson. If there's a little CD image right next to it, that means there's something you can download there. So uh, here's Marge Dutson, Lillian Austin. Uh, and if we just sort of go clink at literacy sessions, um, here's Norman James. Uh, you go down, here's um, Fawcett and Martin's audio collection. And we'll just click on this one, see, see what's there. So if you click on it, it'll get you the details. Um, so here's Bill Fawcett, John Martin, Carolyn Martin. And then, uh, what I'm usually looking for is these wave files. And that means here's something I can, I can usually click on it. And depending on what kind of setup you have, your computer, your browser, whatever it is, if you're on some sort of mobile device, you sometimes have fewer options. But if you're on a computer, you can usually just click on these and download them. Sometimes you can play them right in the browser. Um, so if I just selected save file, I can check that out later. And that starts downloading. And I can go back. And so some of the things that you could do as well is if you know a particular speaker, like I could put in here uh, Paratovich or Paratrovich, depending on your dialect. Uh, so here's, you're going to get a bunch. You're going to get some Haida stuff. And we go down. And then we, we sort of see, like, it shows us what it is. And here's phone calls. Uh, with Clara Paratovich, uh, with Jeff Lear and Clara, and here's Robert. So we can sort of go down farther, and then we can see 
um, uh, there's some sort of speaker call, you know, so on, on a speaker phone and maybe they're recording it. And, and so the same thing. So you can go here and you click on it. And then you can, here's the wave files. So you can have them listen to them. I can also go back here. If you're from, uh, let's see. I wonder if I can hit Atlan if that anything comes up. So yeah, I mean, there's lots of stuff for, uh, so here's some stuff with uh, Elizabeth Nyman. You can listen to her. Uh, so I just want you to know that this resource is out there. Uh, the Yukon Native Language Center also has a bunch of stuff that's online. I haven't looked at it in some time. Um, but one of the things that you have to do as a learner of Tlingit is you gotta surround yourself with a language. Uh, and there's lots of stuff out there to help you with that. Um, you can't uh, you can't really sit around and wait for it to happen. You can't be you know if your attitude is like, well, when when the language comes around, I'll be ready. You're you're going to have to bring it around you, and you're going to have to bring it around others, and you're going to have to put yourself into some of those areas as well. Uh, let's see. So here's language lessons. We'll check that out. So here's um, some encouragement phrases. These are great. Uh, so we can take a look at the large version of this eventually. So while that's loading, I guess maybe I'll try this one. So this came out uh, for thinking of like COVID awareness and stuff. I think this came out pretty early. Um, just being encouraging for, for folks. Uh, let's see, what else do they have? Oops, I got one. What's the difference between a WAV file and an MP3? Uh, an MP3 file is usually compressed. So that means um, it makes it, it wants to make the file smaller, and it does that by kind of squishing the audio. And so it depends on how much it compresses it. But you can end up with some kind of bad sounding audio. There's just a little bit of a, um, you, you could just sort of hear some of the differences. Like the, the lower stuff gets lost and the higher stuff starts to get lost and it flattens it down a little bit. But you can have MP3s that are not too bad, but usually it, just, it makes it into a smaller file. The WAV file is the best, uh, but if you've got a whole bunch of stuff, then an MP3 file can save you a lot of room in terms of. Um, how much stuff you can store, like on a phone or anything like that. You're not cheese. Ah. Renee, uh, I think one of the most helpful things there for me is these uh, literacy sessions. Um, if, if there's all kinds of, that's these um, uh, down, yeah, down, uh, yeah, the, um, these are these sessions that uh, Jeff Lear did with uh, speakers. Um, but there's all kinds of amazing stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it's going a little slow, but yeah, I think you can download those. You can also usually get printed versions. If you, if you ever are in Whitehorse, go into the Yukon Native Language Center and, and check it out. But I, I think most of their stuff is online, uh, and then they've been trying to put more and more online. And, and the, with the literacy, literacy sessions, yeah, it's really neat because you'll find all kinds of just getting different sentences, different things that they, that came to mind as they sort of work through um, documenting the language and working on how to sort of teach people more stuff. So, okay. Okay. Well, let's get back into talk. Uh, so uh, talk uh, is just a wonderful story to learn from. So I thought the approach that would take uh, this evening is We'll look at a video that just shows you the whole story. And uh, the Tlingit will be big and the English will be little in the corner. Check it out if you want to. The story does go by pretty fast. Uh, Anna, I updated our class webpage last night, so it does have uh, talk uh, on there. You can get the MP3 file for the audio. 
you can download uh, the version that's in Hashika. You could download the the grammar um, slideshow that we were looking at yesterday, and then we'll get back into that slideshow. We'll do that for a bit, and then we'll uh, try and maybe we'll do possessive suffixes, but we'll see how much time we end up with. So this is on uh, YouTube. So let me, oops, hold on. I got to share the audio. And so we're just going to listen to the, the whole story, and then we'll start going through it again. Awe <laughs> I had 1906 model. I a Ya <laughs> Ya take a tea, ya, ya family, aya has to hochan at the aya, ya connak in. Aya ten of a tea, aya te awa soon. You quite a pe atka. Tessie who could de aya ya to ye da de a to quick to ye kaku was she. Teho aya so tessie who could. Question <laughs> Shandayana could test Te awaya to anete to hite at sa ayete. Gan awa, gan kawus kawa kahel chenyo wetu yana ye. Ayite to hite yite nesu kotwa kuskakon waya tak awa waya na tu. Awa ko awa tu tak tewu kute as kotra ya tik. Tis 
to Kekanach Aikra and as anything now, a shower hit, so a shower hit, so a shower hit, so a shower hit. Yaka Yaka, Hosiku Ayaka Jayakus Hakan, Hanik Denko Ayaka Sene, Ahun Hohasayatahnaha, a jack. Was gets a gersene gets on to Nick Den and the Yetra. Yakeshakte to need a ho a gekeh sakane. Ayahawe should at a ark. Cut our hot or cut our hot. Yakus Hakon. Catch us a kekte ayeti yaw, test at us and cut to the shat. Was gets a gersene was Hakon take I just a time cut to the shatri awa oxy oo. Wakus hakon kitty awa oxy oo. Kawaii oo me awa taka hutsite. A joa taka who was taka to take kujia hawa hutsin. Kus hakon hawa city yet so. So I would talk to our but to us a gay kashi yet a hutke kawaji. Yeah, I The key on car rushing get on there. I'll see ya. Connor get on it. I ate. I get on it. I yashin get on it. I'll see ya. Yataka. A jay a ye a dutch casting. Could city a ye hearty ye a ya taslan. Taslan. Ya are ten to one na ya. Ya. Terrible cross, you do a sock, ya, 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 go to Ade and Achna Ade, ya. A hunk, ya, ya, do a sock, Taslan. Aya, she at the hen, ha, she at the hen, a chaye, so aye, ha, ya, he, ha, he, no, he was cassi, a, ya, ayan, squatan, ya, that, ya, a get the king, scapasni, the top, eh, no. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of errors in there. I think going, I think I did that in 2012. Oh, I, I started working on this story actually in 2007. Uh, it had already been translated, already been like all the work had been done. But I was trying to figure out. Um, working with Richard Dauenhauer and Alice Taff, how to develop a way to sort of blow it up so you could see all the pieces that were in there and at the same time go through. Like, the work is translating and like transcribing and translating Klinget, like Chit Wu was talking about the work that he's doing on Klagun, uh, the Klagun uh, Yukatangi, her, her language and oratory. Uh, and then Many of you, Kuchik, I know, has done a lot of this work, and, and many of you have done this work to listen to Tlingit, write down the Tlingit, and then to translate it. It's incredibly hard work. And, and I'm not trying to make excuses for any, I, I got mistakes all over the place, and I'm, I'm always thankful when people see them and let me know. Um, I'm not happy when people like just talk negative about it, which sometimes happens. I work with when I worked with George and Marge, some people would say some negative things about the work we were doing. Or you'd get really upset. Uh, but like just like pointing out like a, a missed underline and like, well, I think that's actually one word. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I was seeing. I was like, oh, I gotta fix this thing, that thing, the other thing. Um, but I think translation is forever. And, and by that I mean it the work just lasts forever. And at some point you gotta say, get that thing out the door and just, I don't know, I'll go fix it later. It's like you could just tinker with it forever. And you've got so many decisions to make as a translator. But I think that's such valuable and fun work to, to do that stuff, to, to listen to it. And um, yeah, he's a pretty well-paced speaker, but he also has points where he gets pretty excited. And so there's kind of high action points in the story too, where he's like, 
like when he sees it and there was no way he could get out of there. And so like, we'll take a look at what's going on in there. Um, but yeah, so any uh, reflections, thoughts? And so maybe we'll just sort of talk for a few minutes longer, take our break and then come back and start walking through the story again. Just to, and the purpose of walking through is to show you all the pieces that are there. When you're looking at whole language, what does it look like and what kinds of things do we recognize and we'll practice reading them and things that come up. Any thoughts, questions? It's really Shish for sharing the the speech with us. Um, it's interesting that to interview or to even listen, it's it's exciting because it makes me feel like I'm sitting right there in that room with him like he's talking right directly to me. So I can only just imagine his body language, his expressions, how he's using his hands, you know, talking and, you know, you know, just making gestures. So it's, it's not an easy thing when, you know, you're transcribing and because it's, you know, we're, trying to wear two brains, you know, a Tlingit brain and a, a Western culture brain and to write it down. And it's hard to capture all of those, those moments and, and have it written in there. But it's, um, I really enjoy listening to our, our elders speak to us. It's, it's just phenomenal. Good night, Chish. Ah, you can. And we'll look at one more this evening, just sort of, uh, Closing it off with some of the greats, uh, Kitchnach, George Davis, like sort of a collection of some of the speeches he made in 1980 at the elders gathering. Um, yeah, and it's it's just so, I'm always grateful for the folks who did the recording of this and the transcription and the translation work. Uh, you know, there was one time I was working with Nora. I was working with Nora on some translation work and I was like, and it's like, okay, well, I, I wrote down the thing, yet, but the, the translation of this, what, what does this translate to? And she goes, it's your turn. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, here's what I think it is. And so it was, it was so much fun to work with her. And then with seeing her and, and Richard, like they were married, right? And so sometimes it was like, you're, you're sitting at the dinner table and mom and dad are arguing a little bit, you know, because he would go on for sometimes for 10 minutes about how awesome this thing was and really break it down and show it to us. And then he'd get done and she'd go, that's not what it means. <laughs> and so, and then, then the, the, you know, he would just go, <sighs> and then, so it was, but it was fun. There was so, it was such an amazing team, such an incredible and uh, hardworking team. And there's lots of people who were carrying on that work to just try and put out the next thing and put out the next thing. And there's so much thing out there and a lot of it needs to be documented. And some of the work that you folks will be doing will be making decisions. Like we've got to hold on to the dialect. I got to be able to write down this dialect, make sure I'm capturing how the people talk and cake and how they talk and cloak and how they talk and Tesla. And then also like the translation is going to be it's really fun because sometimes you got to add a little bit just to just to make it work in English. Or you got to rearrange the words, and and there's always a million decisions just with one sentence to make. So, okay. Any other thoughts? I like the commanding way he sounds. When I was getting lessons with Grandma Joe as a kid. To Grandma Joe White Nahuna, she would give us lessons all day, follow her around, and she'd tell you teach us things. And then Grandpa Joe would just tell a story like that, and he would have everybody's attention. Just hold your attention. And man, I just wish I could go back and record it. But it was like that. It was a story. It's something. Yeah. Between, like, and there's a whole bunch you can analyze the repetition and when they use this particular words and when they start shifting 
like a story is in mostly in a perfective, but it'll switch to other verb modes. And you could look at that too. There's so much stuff you can examine. And then also just from workshops like this, we're going to end up harvesting the next great storytellers of Shingit. It's going to come from you guys. And, you know, and, and this is what's going to happen as we sort of see this. And some of us who've been doing this a while, we got to see the, the greats in action. You know, we get to be there when Clarence Jackson told a story in Tlingit and, and to be there when Walter Sobloff gave a speech in Tlingit and, and to hear uh, Jesse Johnny to, to speak in Tlingit and, and to tell us things. But then we, we also saw them go. And so now a lot of us are like, okay, we gotta, we gotta plug these holes in the boat. And, and it's a pretty tough call because sometimes I feel like, you know, uh, it's like that movie where this little tiny person, little, he's a pretty short little guy and they put him out on the football field or something like, okay, go get him. And he's like, I don't know, you know? And so, but then again, like uh, sometimes like, when I was learning Tlingit, you know, it was early stages of learning, they would say things like, This is why we taught you, so that you'd be ready. And they would sometimes put you out there, right? And so, um, okay. So that that's the reason why we look at the stories and the speeches. And I know uh, we got to do a little bit more in the future on the day-to-day -day conversations and so um, well, I guess maybe that's the next great text in Tlingit. It's just like, how do you just talk? How do you just, you know, here's 50 model conversations just based on some particular subjects. And, and so I think we'll, um, we'll try and get some of that stuff done for you folks so that you'll have it to go off of. Uh, Alice Taff, her, her work is phenomenal. So we're also trying to make sure that there's access to that work. Um, that's going to be happening over the summer, I think, too, so that that stuff can be watched with subtitles, you know, and eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need the subtitles, but until then, they'll be there. All right. Um, oh, go ahead. Shakanik, I had to kick. Um, to kick, I had luck. I mean to say the younger brother succeeds, the little one. Very common in Shingit. There's, there's these common whole bunch of Kenyan like tropes. Uh, the youngest one usually is the one that succeeds. Uh, the other thing is like somebody does something to mess everything up, and then a whole bunch of people got to pay. And, and in some of the stories, the younger one is like, well, we know that's not supposed to happen. That's why it happened. <laughs> so it's like, it's like you know. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of things that we'll see in these stories that, um, the, and then another common thing is like so an animal appears as a person and like charms people and gets them to be like, yeah, I'll marry you right now. Right. And so like these things just kind of happen. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take 10. We'll come back, take a closer look at talk. Uh,
Gout Code Hit and Sheesh. Okay, let's get back into Tag uh, and uh, what we'll do is we'll do a similar thing. So we'll hear like a sentence and then uh, if I can get someone to read it afterwards, so you will have heard it already twice, and then read it and then we'll talk through the translation a little bit and then we'll look at the expanded version. And then if you have any thoughts, questions, just feel free to share. Anybody want to say that? Somebody read. Yes, ya dog. Cut city. And uh, what do we got here? So let me help her with the translation. Young man. Yep, young man. Yes, yes, ya duck is a ya duck is a young man, and then yes, ya duck would be newly young man. So. These are stages of growth. Yedakwatsku um, uh, is an adolescent boy. Yedak is probably uh, old enough to probably start. Um, uh, they're beyond puberty, probably. And uh, as we look at this, so here's the parts. So yis uh, is an adjective. Yaduk is a noun. Chatsati is the verb. The chatsati verb is to be a member of a group. Um, and then the one thing we keep in mind is we should be having an underlying x suffix on here, which I'll sort of maybe mark out like that. Oh, I guess it's, in, it's down below. Uh, and this suffix marks which one is the group. So I am one of these things, right? And so this is used to talk about uh, identity, clan, moiety. It's used to talk about um, ethnicity. It's used to talk about uh, being some type of thing, a teacher, uh, an alcoholic, like a, all these things would fall under the use of this verb. And then those of you who have been studying Tlingit for a while, you'll notice like, um, like literally he, he's saying, I am a young man. Like, so it's in, it's in a, it's an imperfective verb. So it's what you would say like right now, but then you'll see like as storytellers work with language, they'll drift in terms of which modes they're using. And, um, Richard Dauenhauer liked to sort of talk about this stuff a lot and have theories on why that is. He'd, he'd say it's usually a scene shift, is what he would talk about. So. There we go. Who's going to read this one? And um, let's do this maybe one chunk at a time. What do we got there? Well, the very young man again. So I think as soon as. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple parts we've got here. The t, and you just gotta watch how this is used. It's a tricky thing in Tlingit. It, it's then, so it's usually like talking, and it could be doing a couple different things, like saying, at that time, perhaps. But more commonly, it's tying some things together. This happened, and this happened, or then when this thing was happening, this other thing was happening. Uh, t, 
And so that's what that does. Uh, so there's a couple of really interesting things that do go on, that are going on here. One is um, you can make, uh, there's some pretty complicated things I think going on in here. And one of them is that there's a noun version of the verb. That's what it looks like to me, which would be sati. But then sati uh, But then uh, from the time when this thing was going on, right? And so that's what the dach is doing. So dach, we've learned uh, quite a few of us that it's a motion marker, right? It's kind of it's like going from the house. It's from this person. Uh, but it's also a time marker. So in this case, um, you could have whatever this thing is. So here you've got yis yaduk, but you could have anything in there, right? As far as from the time I was this thing, right? So you could say, uh, from the time they become they became a teacher. So it's using both the verb, but then it's also talking about from the time that this verb has happened. And that's why you have the dach right there. What about that part? I had a um, um, fuel boat, maybe you could say it that way. Yeah, yeah, I had a motorboat, right? Some some kind of a boat with a motor, um, which in Tlingit is called Tsinayak, which is literally means a light boat. Um, Tsina being like a light that lights up a room, right? And then one note I'll make on this one is a lot of us uh, maybe have learned the phrase Achjiwu to have. So you could say, um, to have a thing, right? But then if you say you don't have it, then you'd say, I ain't got no money, right? I got no cup. So the, the one thing is that w suffix. That's the is at suffix. It is in my possession. So when it goes negative, it goes kesh g, right? So the w part falls off. So we should not be saying kesh dana ach g wu, is that w should be falling off. The other thing is it's a verbless phrase to have something in Shingit. So if you want to start talking about like used to have, did have, will have, won't have, it's got to, now you got to introduce a verb. And that verb is usually going to be yati, uh, ye yati, which is to be, uh, but once you put certain things in front of it, it becomes to be at a place. So achji ye wuti, I had it. You could say I have it, I had it, but don't have it no more. Achji ye wuti, and you could say I'm going to have achji ye kwati. Right. So here it is. Kind of there's pulled it, pulling it apart a little bit. Oops, what's going on? So uh, there's the part we got T in there twice. So we got two verbs in the sentence. Um and then Those would be our two verbs. Okay. Yeah. Could I ask you to um, talk about one more time? I know you've said it a number of times, but yeah. I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. Um, wh why we're writing the suffixes attached to the verb phrase like dach and qa. Um, yeah. Can you explain that again? Yeah. So a, a suffix usually, um, it's not a whole word. So it usually just attaches right to something. Day, dach, uh, 
And so it includes attaching it directly to nouns, directly to bases, and, and di directly to verbs. So this might have been a pattern is to write it sort of like that. Uh, but one of the, the ideas here is to sort of say, well, it, it doesn't like to be, it, it can't really be alone, right? You can't say, like it doesn't make sense. It, it, it sounds like you're saying uh, a low tone, which would be all of them, right? Which like, I, I think that's something you could say. Um, and so usually if it, if you pull it off of a noun completely, you would have to put a in front of it and you'd have a duck or ah, and you could say a duck nagu, ah nagu, which could be um, get away from it. Um, and so usually now, so when we, and you can most commonly when you're going to attach these types of suffixes, uh, de or duck to a verb, you're talking about up till the time that verb happens or from the time when that verb happens. So it gets a little bit tricky because you're not really talking about that verb happening. You're just saying, um, in this case, I would translate the dach um, probably as since. Like since the time I was a young, I was just a young man, I had a boat. Right. So really what he's saying is like, yeah, I was probably like eight, ten years old. And I had my own motorboat, right? And so this, he's talking about sort of back what his life was like back then. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? Okay. Okay, good question. It's a good question. Ah. Okay. Next one. I had... 1906 model. We'll just do that one once. Nobody has to read it. It's right there. Uh, although they're, if you're translating and they start switching to to English, um, these days we're just sort of writing it. Like I, I probably wouldn't even write it in quotation marks anymore. I just, I just write it. And, and so it's, a lot of times we're doing sort of a side by side translation, uh, which I'll show you in a document in a little bit. Um, and then I would just keep it on the singet side. And, you know, it gets a little tricky, though. Once and we're gonna see this blend of singet in English. Uh, and there was a good question that somebody had a little while ago. So when you're talking tomorrow, uh, if you're having it, like if you're sort of in the beginner phases, you're you're hinik, hin chayach, and you want to put a little bit of. <laughs> I just saw the chat of um english in there that's fine if you're going to sprinkle a little bit of english in there um but it's a gray area because i wouldn't want like this five minute speech it's all in english but throws a whole bunch of clinket nouns in there you know well i saw this yate the other day and it was sitting there next to a chalk and it was on the niche you know, it's kind of i think it's cool but i think also um if it starts to get too long, it's sort of like, well, okay, fine. So yeah, I, I think it's fine if to use English. Like sometimes you don't know the words for things or how to think it. There's so much stuff to just connecting thoughts together. It's such a big part of it and sequencing them and stuff like that. So yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay. And so here's one you'll see. So it's, you know, another option could be putting the English in italics. You know, so it's it's something that I think we're still figuring out how to how to do because speakers they would always do this. Not all of them, but there's quite a few of them. They would just throw an English word in there all the time. You could say that in Schlingit. Okay, who's gonna read this one? Oh, Rene. Ah. I have a comment on the the quote marks. I think italics would be the way to go because there's no quoting going on here at all. Right. It's just a different thing. But it's not king it. Yeah, it's just sort of like just helps people as they're reading along because there, there could be some 
like what if you, the English word was hit because someone couldn't think of like um, the trinket to say it. So putting it in italics, I think makes sense. Sheesh. And he had a, a peg vowel in there. Would oh. you reflect that? Yeah. Where was it? Play it again. Hmm. Yeah. That would be that would be hard to if you didn't know he was saying come out, that would be hard to hear that. Because I'd be looking rabbit hole trying to figure that one out. Yeah, and there's some of them where you listen for a long, you're translating something, and you listen to it for a hundred times on repeat, and you slow it down. And you're like, "Oh, has that come out?" <laughs> okay, yeah, and there is. Um, so this term uh, pegvel. Let's talk about this for a, a quick second here. So a pegvel is used in Tlingit when. Um, just saying the thing without a vowel would get really challenging. And then sometimes it just sort of needs to be there. Uh, one example would be, there's a verb. Uh, let's see, I think this is it. Wudzakhaq. So this means uh, a salmon for, especially a sockeye or a dog salmon or a coho to change their color when they get into the fresh water. And so is also a noun, which is a salmon that has changed its color when it's getting ready to spawn. So there is a repetitive version of this. And so you could say, um, I think it's like this. Is and so this letter I pops up in the front because technically that could be saying you regularly change, like if you're talking to a salmon, I guess. Huh. Ah. Hut. Oh, how would you say that? Okay, sorry, I'm gonna get myself confused. But this letter I pops, it doesn't mean anything. The letter I is a very common peg vowel in Tlingit. And that just means it needs, it gets you to the next sound. And so when we talk about peg vowel, so when he says, come out, he doesn't say, come out, ya nastini. He says, come out, ya nastini. He's got this little, there's a little vowel in there. Uh, very good, catching that vowel. Okay. So, are peg vowels always short? And can all the short vowels be peg vowels? Uh, I think they are usually short. Um, it's usually going to be an I or it, the I is the most common one. Um, but if it's rounded, then sometimes it'll be a U. Uh, another, well, like, let's see. So sometimes you'll have like a uh, right and so this this is sort of peg vowel uh and so if you're going to pluralize this so this means my grandparent but if you're going to say my grandparents then it's usually going to come out like that because it, it's just got to be it's got to turn that u into a vowel and so sometimes things like that happen in Tlingit as well, where like just the the process, it's just too difficult to do like it, you just have to like turn the vocal cord, like actively sort of turn it off. And so it just says, just vocalize that U, that W and turns it into a U. Okay. Did everybody read this? I don't think anybody read this. Gook. Okay. And uh, what do y'all think? It's a translation there. Uh, 
first came out. Yeah. All right. From when they first came out. So there's there's some complicated stuff that is going on in here. Uh, so shugunach is usually the the in the beginning or the first one. Come uh, out, Yanastini. There's a very interesting way that he's he's saying that. Um, I think the way that this verb is put together is still pretty unusual. Um, so, and some of the reasons for that is you don't really hear this verb with this. When you have ya and at some point na, those two things usually combine to form uh, what we call a repetitive or a, a progressive imperfective. It's in the process of happening. Ya na gut, ya na squeen, ya na gween. Um, and so there's quite there's a whole bunch of verbs that have them, but this this one does not usually have that form of it. Um, it's in the process of becoming this thing, but you know I I think you certainly I mean he does it so you obviously can do it, uh, but it's it's pretty unusual to have this form of the verb because a lot of uh, state verbs don't really have this middle part where it's like it's in this process of becoming it right and that's what the ya na is doing and if you're going to have a ya basically so the ya pops up before it might be k and it might be ye depending on the conjugation type of the verb all the ga conjugation verbs will be um k and all the ka conjugation verbs will be ye but the other thing that's going to happen is if this verb root is open, which means it ends in a vowel, it'll get an N on it, which will close it up. The other tricky part uh, is if, uh, oops, let me put this up here. If this N or if something closes an open root, so if the verb root is open, ends with a vowel, if it ends with an ee, -E, and then it's going to close with an ee, -E. so like we'll say ee -E n, right? So that's what you're going to get. It's going to go from e to een. Okay, that's what's going to happen. If it's um, if it's ai, so if that's how the verb, uh, that's how the stem. Sorry ends, then it's going to switch to ain, right? So those, it's sort of like, oh, you're going to close it. You just put this, you put this consonant on the end. However, if it ends with ah, it is going to change its shape and switch to a different vowel. And this, this does get a little bit tricky, right? So for example, um, Yaudzea is to examine something, to poke your head out at something. But Yanasin is how you would say that, like it's happening right now. We're going to actually see that later in this story. So A switches to A. When you close it, it's, it's very predictable, but it is tricky. In a similar way, if it ends with U, like Yisaku, then when you close that, it's going to become Wayne. Whoops, I ran out of room. So, for example, Ausaku um, ya anasquain, right? And so these are the things that do happen. That's why Quina, that's where that word comes from. Um, so these are just some some advanced level tricks to just keep in mind. These are things that Tlingit does. Uh, it's just something that the vowel does in a open in an open root. Open meaning it ends with a vowel. If it ends with ee, you just add a consonant. Ends with ei, add a consonant. Ends with aa, it's gotta switch to ei. 
ends with OO, it's got to switch to WEI. And this is good to know because if you look up a verb, like you see this verb, um, you know this song, and it goes, uh, and you're like, what's this Yanagwain thing? So then you might hear the ya na, and you're like, oh, so it's in this process, it's gwaining. That's all I know. But then you go start looking up the Gwain. Uh, you're not you're not gonna find it under Gwain, but you will find it under goo, which is for a pod of killer whales or other sea mammals, or a what do you call it? a flotilla of canoes to go together, or boats for boats to go together. Okay. Everyone okay? Questions? I was going to say, like to me, uh, to me, that it's almost like the conditional there, right? Like that mastini with the, without the ya, right? And then the translation is when, eh? When they first came out is, is how you. Yeah. Uh, and then the other neat thing about that to me is that uh, I at the end is relating back to come out probably, eh? In English, is that. Or not, or would that just be the conditional there? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let's go look up the conditional, because yeah, you might be, that might be it. So we'll go down to the T verb. Lots of verbs in here. Sorry if the scrolling makes you dizzy. Uh, so here's T to be whole bunch of verbs, caring about, needing, similar to, busy, appearing before, born, grateful, quiet, whether to be a certain way, feel like doing, being, uh, staying there, dwelling there, becoming. So here we are with the city verb that's being used right here, right? So we get a command form, a don't be form, uh, per imperfective, which is the most, this is where we usually hear this verb, I think is usually hear it this way, like I'm an eagle, right? Uh, and then we go down and we start getting into hortative. Uh, just so you know, Raven says Let them be stone. And then they turn into stone. They turn into rocks. Uh, he says that about people. But then we get nastini right there, right? So you could say, um, you know, uh, when it becomes this. And like, when do we use this conditional? This is another sort of thing. It's like, Kleh. you got to just sort of start using it, really pay attention to when people are using a conditional. Uh, it's going to get usually two things. It's going to get the conjugation prefix popping up, and it's going to get this often a ni suffix. Um, and it's not more like, you know, because sometimes you'll say like, when he went to the store, uh, when they went to the store, they bought apples. But the conditional is not, that's not a conditional. That's just tying two verbs together. The conditional is more like, whenever they go to the store they get apples every single time it's like really more a lot more tied closely to a logical cause and effect type of thing so it's not an everyday thing it's more like a, a pattern habitual type of description is what it seems like to me yeah that looks like a good match to me the ya is a little bit um unusual though I'd like to to see it in there but again, like there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff that we figure out and that we we sort of look at. And then there's gonna be some areas as well where we're like, yeah, could be this, could be that, probably this, right? And so there, there's a whole bunch, and I would sit there with Marge and George and, and we'd be listening to like Susie James. We'd be like, okay, it's probably this. <laughs> we just gotta be like, there's our, there's our effort. <laughs> And it's cheese, okay. All right, keep going. Our way, 
All right. Anybody not read yet? Want to read this one? Be a good idea. Good enough, And uh, what do we got here as far as the translation? Uh, jump to Dick. So two I had of these boats. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, there's some really interesting stuff going on here. Uh, always is. Uh, away, just like just noting how that's used. This really helps you get a good flow in your shingit. Especially if you're going to replace um uh uh well like these little things that help buy you some time to think and then um it, as you look you'll just see speakers who start a lot of their sense sentences with it oh what and so sometimes you're just sort of you it signals a bunch of different things they could say i want to talk like if there's a group of people and we're all speaking Klingit, i might say oh what and that means I, I would like to talk it could also signal I'm still talking, like I just need to think for a second. It could signal we're shifting the subject a little bit, even within a sentence or within a larger narrative. Just gives us a little bit of a break between hearing one thing and then getting ready to hear another thing. Renee, uh, does awe in that context mean something similar to so in English? Yeah. Conversationally? Yeah. And, and so like whenever you... As you were encountering it, sometimes you might ignore it. Sometimes you might say, so I had, yeah, I think that, that would be work really well for this case. Um, there's times as well where they'll say, uh, oh, well. and that that's a little bit different than a oh, well. for a uh, oh, well. I think I would maybe say, um, so it is, and then sort of go on to the, the next thing. Um, okay. So there's two. Ach G is uh, my possession. Well, I gotta throw this. Somebody tell me about this thing, or tell them about this thing. I gotta throw my dog outside. I think she's gotta go. Gusto shaggy ish. I thought I heard that, but yeah, <laughs> oh, it's okay. What's the way? Our way, they have to Yeah. Jeet. Uh, Sandy from Yet to a south king, it's Yeah. Like he just, it's almost like they became two in my possession, I guess, if you really wanted to try to like, you know, make the city make sense in, in English. It, that's what it seems like to me. Okay. Yeah, it, it's really, yeah, because to have something, you would expect yati or, or wuti. You know, he's switching, he's switching between perfective and imperfective all the time. And so you'll, you'll see this is a, this is a pattern of sha, dog, 
master storyteller, which is, we just sort of analyze it and wonder why. And so, yeah, let me, we'll listen to it. So like, um, the idea here is that's how it is currently written. And then this is the uh, idea. And he does clear his throat, I think, right in the middle, right? I, I do hear the which is interesting, but you know, it's sort of, it's, as, and as we hear this stuff and as we look at it, um, it's really good to do translation work in a, in a group and to have people to bounce ideas off of. When we would work on the Anushi story, like we had a bunch of learners and a bunch of speakers all in the same room. And then our, um, our linguist, uh, Richard Downhauer. And then we would, usually for a lot of us, we would just listen to them talk about it. And they would sort of go back and forth on what kinds of things they were hearing. And, and so, and we really try, at least I think, we try to steer away from these right and wrong conversations and into these shades of meaning conversation. And what is all this stuff doing? Because what we're going to see as we're going to jump ahead and he's going to use this city again, which is, and this is where it gets tricky too, because T, Yati, Wuti, T, uh, Awati, what did I do? Yeah, Awati. And I guess you could say, yeah, on a team. Um, and so one is a, a handling verb and one is a state verb. The state verb city is to be, but there's another state verb city, which is for something complex to be sitting there, which is uh, perhaps what this one is. So it's, yeah, it's fun. It's interesting to sort of look at this stuff too, because uh, we can sort of look at this and even though we can have four people who are listening to it very carefully, have very finely tuned Shingit Guku, um, yuck, eh, good stuff. And then, yeah, if, if, we, if we stay in that realm of getting to the depth and the complexity and, and the, the same verb, like it sounds like the same verb, but it could be the different verb, right? You could have city and city, and those are two different verbs. Fun stuff. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Even the watch wants to get in on the conversation. Yeah, she has a hard time hearing these old recordings too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I feel you, Siri. Hatsu, hatsu. Yeah, this happens all the time though. Like it's just, it's really common for transcribers and translators to, yeah. like you want to get as many ears as possible on these kinds of things. Cause and then at a, you reach a point where you sort of, come to consensus and you say, okay. And, and coming back to George and Marge, like sometimes we'd talk about just a single sentence for 15 minutes and I'd say, okay, what do we want to do? And then that's okay. Go with this one. That's what we think. <laughs> so it's really fun as this is your job as the, as the interpreters. Sheesh. Well, I, I want to bring up one point because we just talked about this last one. So this is where I would say, like I would have to go back and um, defer because my uh, translation does not account for this this guy here. So if you look at chositi, you see that s pop up again, and it's not with an ach, so it's not ach city. So that means that this it, it has that little sa on it. So in action here, you can see I have to revise that because in context 
the, apparently these kind of boats have a su classifier in them. Yeah. So when is it yati or awati in this case, awati and ausati? And these are <laughs> It's funny because what we have here is probably a handling verb for a complex object. And a boat is a, if you're going to give someone a boat, apparently you're giving them a complex object, which is really interesting. Like even just to like, I will give an, to give you a boat. I have to think of a handling verb that goes with something like that, even though I'm not going to carry it. Right. And so this is, again, um, you just, it's like, a. It's like you're the halibut hook and you just keep spinning down and down towards the halibut hole. So lots of fun stuff. And then for those of you uh, who are fairly new to Shingit, and then you see like this, and we're just, we keep talking about this stuff. And then, um, and that's why these stories are so fun. Like, I, you know, I do, I had a student one time and he's like, give me more. I need to, I need to listen to more and more and more. It's like, well, uh, sure, but you should master these ones. and. And you never can really master them, but you can at least, you can know them. And then you know, like even those areas too, where we're talking about it now. And 30 years ago, they were probably doing the same thing. Well, I think it's this. Oh wait, no, but then, and this is another thing that happens when you translate stuff is you'll have it. Then you go back and you're like, oh, I get it now. Cause now they've mentioned this thing. And then I got to go back and switch it. It's very, very common. And it's, it's fun. It's the fun work, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeet is fun too. Uh, so anything else that we didn't translate yet? So the jeet hwasati is to give someone something like, that's how I would say, like, uh, I gave them this phone. Right, because it's a complex object, but some other things are too, like a belt. It's it's really interesting. The the logic in the language. What about the hoochie eye? What's that? Anybody know? The last one. Yeah, the last one. Right. So hoochie eye, hooch, on its own. Uh, it's a really fun, it's a good word to know. Hooch, uh, it's got a bunch of different uses. It, it kind of means uh, run out or all gone. But it, it depends on how it's being used, right? Like, uh, let's say we're all eating and uh, I grab a napkin and I wipe my mouth and my hands and you say, um, hand me a napkin. And I might look and I grab the last one. So I might say, hooch, it's all gone. Uh, I could say, and then hooch away. That's how you can end a speech or a story. Uh, like there was, if you, we listened to Frank Italio a while back. And uh, I think it was De Laguna. She's like, is he going to tell another story? And he's hooch away. It's all done, <laughs> right? And then, uh, but hooch on its own, it could mean a number of other things too. Like you say, oh yeah, then he went over there to fight with that cannibal. Hooch, he gone. He's he's deceased. Um, and then the hoochie ayi is uh, the last one, right? And so that's that's how these things are working hoochie ayi hoochah uh, hoochah could also like some people will say that, like you're coming up to the end of a song or something and they're telling you to, to end the song hoochah hoochah uh, but don't say it while somebody's talking you get in trouble oh and then yeah hooch hooch is probably something different um just like when you using it uh in in english but I'm not sure about the sound. I know hooch is like a booze, right? It's like some sort of uh, homemade. Yeah. Hooch um, you knew. 
which I think is Chin Chinook trading jargon. Oh, really? Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. Let's see. What is that stuff called? Moonshine? Homebrew? Homebrew, Pukleshech. At the way, you to a soft thing, it's kind of Pukleshech. Kahuanish, Hanako, and Nikosati was soft thing, it's kind of Huktein. Wasa? Homebrew. What's the ESA? Hook the heen. Hook the heen. A cheese got me a heart in that so wet hook. Ah, hook the heen. Okay, so there it is. Hoochie eye. So the ah part is, um, I think it has a pronoun which means some of them. Uh, it's the same one that pops up in a bunch of these nouns, like. Shita, Chuta, Kuhida, Don, well, not Dana, but um, Kutia, Tia. So that ah that you're hearing in there is the one or ones is usually how we're translating that. And then there's different ways it's going to be used, like Huchi ah, the last one. And then sometimes you're going to hear Huchi ah yi, right? And then um, so that's how that's being used i gave it to my son okay huh just checking out catching up on the chat okay next one i don't know this might be the last one we'll see how many we do okay a coach what he wrecked the boot Okay, a coke see what he wrecked the boot. Anybody want to read that? Okay, a coke see what? Sheesh. And uh, how do we translate that? Okay, a coke see what? And we see the English right after, but. It was broken. Yeah, well, and there, there's a couple of things like the sh in this case is there's two things. There's the a, uh, which means there's an object. And then there's a sh, which the classifier shifts. So you could say uh, uh, it was broken. Or it is broken. A cow what would be he broke it. Or they broke it, technically, right? Okay. And then we got the t on there. Then they broke it. And then he translates it into and he has the English, he wrecked the boat. Right. I'm gonna adjust here. Okay, we got twenty minutes left. Uh, I think it'd be fun to do a little bit of conversation. I, and so like, but basically like the idea is uh, you could take a very slow crawl through these stories. Uh, and some of these stories, they're so uh, pivotal. Like this story also exists in Nishka. This story exists in Simshian. Uh, very similar, I'm sure there's differences, but there's there's this, group of stories a woman who marries a bear a mosquito that's born from a cannibal um, there's a set of stories the raven and the box of daylights right that are shared with these neighboring groups these neighboring nations and i think that stuff is interesting he also places you know, some pretty specific context at the end like tesla this was in tesla and then up there and and Car cross is what he's talking about. And Shah Dog, he was very interested in these things because going back to the migrations, going back to separating and then people going under the glacier and all this stuff being tied together into this single story. 
there were other things that storytellers will bring out in here, which was um, that part where he was frozen. Maybe I want to jump ahead and go find that part. There, there's, I mean, there's, there's so much good stuff in this story. Um, so there's a lot that goes on in this part. So with this, there's there's a hope in this, and when he's saying this part, he's saying it very fast because there there's a big thing uh, that's going on. So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out here is the use of this other pronoun ush. Ush is the person we've been talking about. So there's a bit of a main character element, like this this main person that we're sort of talking about. They get to be the ush. And this is one way that thing gets separate. It uses third person pronouns a lot, like an awful lot when you're doing stories. So the ush is there to help us keep track of who we're talking about. Um, and then we got, so ush khandi yanagut. So in this case, the cannibal is walking towards this young man. Uh, some really fun stuff. Um, so what you have here is this verb on its own, which is to turn around. That's what it means, to turn around. To turn away, and in this case, to turn back. Um, you can attach the the main portions of this to other verbs. There's uh, the name of the Yukon College, I think, is a yamdegut, and so uh, that is from that verb uh, to turn around while walking. And so there's there's these different ways to talk about like coming back but this one is talking about turning around right then you get a long verb form to say couldn't do it and then there's a couple things that tend to pop up in that uh, you usually get the conjugation prefix you often get the qa that pops up in there you get the irrealis that pops up in there i probably didn't write it in out um, and then a nak is to leave something behind. And so with, there, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here. Um, there's no way that he could, he couldn't turn away from it, is basically what he's saying. Because this, you know, as soon, and we go back a little bit, like as soon as he saw it, he knew what he was looking at. And then once he saw it, he couldn't turn it around. Just then. He was like a frozen thing, something that had been frozen, right? Because you could say a frozen thing, something that somebody froze. A fear, ye ash So there's the ash that pops up. This the verb is. A lot of times, ye ausane, for someone to fix something or to do something to it. In this case, that's what did it to him. Lots of fun stuff in here. Uh, there is one more uh, larger speech act that I want us to look at. Uh, and, you know, it's a three week workshop, so we do these little dabbles. But all this stuff is out there for you to do the deeper dives and then to sort of You'll be one of the ones if if you have if you're not there already, who's coming up with your own theories on how this stuff is working and how we're gonna get more and more people to understand more and more of this stuff. But celebration happens every two years. Uh, but we we got this COVID gap, and it's but it is gonna happen again. But it happens in Juneau, and it was born out of a conference where elders gathered together. Lots of folks spoke. Uh, we have the recording of that. 
gathering if you folks are interested in accessing that record I'll, I'll post the ones that i have i think i have more of them um, every now and then there's some recordings that are really hard to find jesse dalton uh, her speech was hard to find and then someone happened to come upon it just a couple years ago hey we found it so it's so wonderful to be able to hear it to read it then to be able to sometimes take a deep dive like this to digest it and and even if some of this stuff is challenging for you it's tough you, you gotta know you're one of the very few people on earth that even knows how incredible this stuff is most people they they can only look at the translation so you're on this journey to get there and some of you are going to become the ones who say the next great thing and who can do these things uh, but it does take a lot of this this hard work of going into the deep waters and, and doing some of this stuff um, so i want to take us to kitchnar to, to sort of close us off for the evening i'll post all this stuff so you can take deeper dives into it but to the idea is for Shah Dag and Kichnach and, and others uh, to help us get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow is all about you folks sharing language with us. If you haven't gotten your stuff prepared yet, you've got tonight and tomorrow uh -huh. <laughs> and put it together. And, and so what's going to happen is you guys are going to just share the stuff that um, You've put together that you want to share with us I, I don't we don't need the english explanations for it we're going to move into a Tlingit universe and we're going to respect that because it's a sacred thing for a large group of people to create we're going to do our best to not use english but to give us the strength we're going to lean on some of the words of the and then we're going to have some responses by Ida, Chet, Shakaish, to uh, to just sort of close it up, and so uh, it's so fun. It's such an honor to spend time with you folks, and to witness your commitment. It's what we need. It's what we've been waiting for. Um, so let me cue this one up. Okay, this is it. No, that's not it. <laughs> this one. Let me find the audio. I think it's this one. There might be some spots where it's a little messed up, but hopefully I've, we've got it. Yes, yes, 
یعنی تکت یا یا خیت یا خسای و تیشیم چه اخو موتی خاکوچی تی کسی چی کوی آ او او تیش آتی چنیش که خود اوشی یک کندون کاتی یو و آشکون کوچی تی کلاسی شو اچو یه کوپاستی آ یه کوپاستی تا نخست کوپاستی یا نه تا یو قطعاً یو دست قطعی آ آ قطعاً کوی یو و آشکون کوچه که کلاسی شو اچو یه کوپاستی آ یه کوپاستی تا نخست کوپاستی یا نه تا یو قطعاً یو دست قطعی آ อ่าอุปกรณ์เวสยาอุยาอีตัดยาอ่าทุดัสโควตีอ่าอ่าฮาสิงกิสตีเอเวข้าเฮชิปุชคินอคุสตีกุลสีเฮวะอคายาฮา
Wow. How? Yeah, wow. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> Hast du etrian to at Kitchnach Sha Dag an Gun Kuu Wu Tlitzin has to two ye yeti et the cut you han so et jaku dachs away you han ya ha yuk a tungi a tade a ya gachi art ye awa ha kusti ye wush aya Ya katu wa ach Joya we tik isani tin Kesh Keshka kachtu Sed koa Ye awa hatu was a goo Wuch in has a tea Wasa has the kuzi, ya has the eight Ya chaki gee awa a datu took the tun Wasa kukwane Ya ha dat, was a ha kwa tea, stuck at you han. Ye go ayah one kwa. Sekanen, you a tongue kaya kahil yeh. Ye awe, kuk de kena zaha you a tongue ye. A ka kakak to ark. Ye tuck your gee away, got hasty you a tongue ye, stuck at till two. Ye awe ach to us a googles cheese. Do so do to us a good tani. Saku Kayasiku, see the Kai you fan. A day Yayeji in and ya. Hasilku has has the two okay and as gain. Kinder ain shak the you yas yander hun. Ye kadach. Tuchawa Ya ye who has old be knee has I a teen has to has to talk cock has has to sleep go has has to sunny has to go is a goo to tell where a hunk who yak a ya a hunk yag grenade a who art so. Ha shu kwat kus ti yi a. Kajaya ha sil ku has. Su ya singit a ni kuk ha hu ye ti yi a tsu. A hu a yi si ku. Ke yi shi. Anya sa hash. Ka nak. Shayati hain de. Jaye su. Kudzi dain. Ya da her kaga jich, has to turn the tanias ranach the woos in her you a tangi da tra. Has ranai woos. Tail has at was cootin so. Korte has rakahil was. One knee so well. So as to ya da korahir. Jetta, so we has to took ye yeti. Ju has to took ye the cart, he has to eat with the little two at. Tlachie, yes, dach could see gay dach. Yes, dach could see gay. Ju tay uhan has to silk or has to eat with the two ye you a tank. Has ran I woos. Uhan so a hun hutin. Achlag has to. 
Haskanai woos Ahua Ketena Kashiku Keyu Katang Yiko Ayakwan Achtoka is Siku Yagi Tat at ye are he. Jenny White Ah, Jenny White, you to Sakun Yachu Kan Shah. Du tag eta hu katan kaya. You dek pati katu art. Ya ha si ku has tundatani. A de ti ye katu ju yawi dat shakte you. You tsere kau a nikawe. Yes tu wati. Get dain ha. Get dain. Kakar tu shagukt. Has has say a hey. Has ku has. Jenny White. Ye ku awa ka. Du tlaak eidach. Ithlith kunji na kheek. Ye chaagu adi. Jigi na kikwa. Nanna. Ja kleine Chowe Kaik was schrien and na. At Chowet Lechji Nakri, yet Jago Atti. Ye away to clutch, yo sicka. Lichji Nakri, yet Jago Atti. Hayu Katangi. A two nacht sa, yen nacht do at lark, chira, sing it was tea ye. A decodus tea ye ye, a two nacht sa. How you go, I yak one you fan. Ya a hunk you katangi. Ya a git so. Ya ha silk who has ya sha dog ya kitchen ask. To ye ha shook her. Ya wuna at the ah has. Ha shook her ya wuna at the ah has. Has to you katangi. To tay to woo yet, would do who woo yak nakati. To tay to woo yet, would do who woo yak nakati. Are you katang, Gunas cheese, a great yisa are Gunas cheese, hon, get a quatty. Woo. Cheese ha. Hanaska hit a yer second yer a tangy team. You're all going to make rafts with your language tomorrow. Uh, we were inspired by what we heard and also giving you all encouragement. Whatever you can do, that's going to be good enough. These are the steps we take to emerge from a place where it was almost gone. Ah. Uh, um, ha in Kananika dot. Where has to you a tangi? Clash Ayah has you a tank has to no has to g Ayahawa ha in Kananik one of so where speech where you a tank. So yeah, in a car. Um, um, cost egg. Well, clash cost egg, but on uh, George. Do you katangi? Ayahaya, ye awa cast the cut to you katangi, has tone marks of two. Has to in kananik wana so well. Is he cooker? Ye teat hoya. Achtuch hokoa, George Davis, Kotnak, Wyatty, yak so well. Achtuch the seek who has. Ich kiesling git yakus kasa atkin chak. A wasa kao yeto etel kusako. Ako a. Sakti ki ye yeti yitling git kaina hu katank kusiti. Ich ki ari. Utsu yeti yiks with wet tone. At kasi fin also, I mean, on top of that. Ayahua. Kan kaki hu katangi chakut a. Just you kak kotan yate yak kan kakit ka achtu asaku ya 
A couple of things as we wrap up this evening and and as a really good question is like the the way that the language sounds and the way that we use these recordings to continue to think about how we sound when we speak. For some of us, we're working on our accent just so we can make some of these sounds more naturally. For others, we're working on uh, pushing all these things together so it sounds shingit. And for others, we're just continuing to fine tune to try and catch just to be an echo of these these giants, these legends. Uh, there's probably a few things to think about. One is dialect. Two is long time ago. People, they, they rounded a lot more things. You could just hear it when he's saying like, it sounds like wow woo sometimes when he's talking about time or a drum. The other thing is when you're, if you're really being spiritual with your language, it's hitting this very high register. And you could hear when he was taught, like, because what you're trying to do and what they tried to do in 1980 was to turn this whole tide. They could see it. They could see the language being lost at such an unstoppable level that they called out to everything in the universe to get that to stop and to go a different direction. And so it's like, just the weight of colonization and everything else, you're trying to push that back. And so because of, and when, when you're working with language like that, it's like, I, as I scroll through, I was like, oh, when, maybe we could change that. Maybe we could change that. Maybe we could change that. But just sometimes too, to look at the concept, what are the concepts there? It just blows my mind. Every time I listen to it, I just get blown away at like the depths of, of what they had done. And this is just one person you could, you, we, we really should spend a whole, I said, we could spend the whole summer swimming around in their language, like a school of herring or, or hooligan, just swimming around in that language. Um, but we have to wrap it up for the evening. Uh, wonderful stuff. And we just got to keep listening, keep, and what we are, what we're doing tomorrow is we're, we're going to stand out on this rocky point and just speak. And you're speaking to this group and you're speaking to everything that's been. You're speaking to Kichnach, you're speaking to uh, and you're speaking to everyone that's going to come. But that, that doesn't mean that uh, this is your only chance. This means this is one of many chances to do this. This is what we do as as Shlingit, to internalize the language. Sometimes you have to step up when in moments like this, and it's practice. It's practice. Someday someone might call on you to do this stuff, to help heal people, and and you got to be ready. And so this is a chance to be ready. And this is a chance to say, Shlingit. <laughs>
has altu ha yu qitang yu qaha qusti qishtasa ayak kuge ye awa qilchish yu gu ayak wan ye wushkak tu steen seqanen we'll all come together tomorrow um feel free to reach out if you if you got any questions as you're putting stuff together it's not any kind of final exam it's nothing like that it's just a chance to to bring stuff out and to share it with each other Ah, Thank you.